Hey everybody, welcome to indigomusic.com. Happy World Wildlife Day. My guest today uh, on World Wildlife Day is an Indian filmmaker. He's a photographer born in Bengaluru and brought up in nature, I think you could say. Um, joining me right now is the very talented man behind the 2019 documentary Wild Karnataka as well, Amoga Varsha. Hi, happy World Wildlife Day to you. Thanks, Nirja. Thank you so much. And wish you a happy World Wildlife Day too. Thank you so much. Um, I mean, Amoga, if I can call you that, you travel extensively for work. And of course, the pandemic probably you know, put that to a halt. Where are you right now? Where are you talking to me from? Actually, right now, like I'm in Bangalore, but uh, I just came in yesterday and I'm leaving tomorrow. So I'm right in the middle of travel. Now that things are easing up a little bit, I'm sure you're just waiting to get back on your feet. What was the pandemic like for you? Because you leave, uh, you live such an exciting life. What got you excited during the pandemic? So, uh, I mean, surprisingly, I kind of got into India just a week before the lockdown, uh, luckily. Yeah. And uh, through the uh, whole lockdown, we were doing uh, a whole bunch of filming for the government. Right. So in totality, I was at home for a very, very short time, but it was interesting to see how uh, places look devoid of people, right? Yeah. It, could be, yeah. it could be our own parks, like the Lal Bag and the Kavan Parks. And, yeah. and also to see that um, kind of, lot more birds would show up um, yeah. because there was less disturbance. Yeah. So in a way, it was very different, but it was also kind of eerie to see places empty and, and you know, devoid of people. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a very interesting and strange experience, you could say. But in a way, it was great for the animals, I'm sure, without the people, without the interferences. Um, so that must have been quite the experience. Now, uh, I want to talk about um, where you started off. You started off as a software engineer. Right, right. And, uh, you know, before deciding to take up photography and filmmaking full time, that's what you were doing. So was that transition difficult or easy? What was that like for you? So, I mean, of course, it was easy in some ways in terms of I like what I do in both cases, both in software and wildlife. Right. So the transition in terms of work was not that difficult, but building a new career from scratch and, and, you know, in India now, if you calculate most of the wildlife filmmakers are about 50 people, that's all. Yeah. 50. So in a country of a billion people, the fact that, you know, we have only 50 wildlife filmmakers tells you that it's a very niche field and it's very hard to make a livelihood. So definitely it was difficult in the, in the transition period in terms of just making a living, right? And, and to give you a reference, I made 5% of my salary, not 50%, 5% of my salary when I switched. Yeah. <laughs> but but then I keep saying that you know I get paid to do what other people pay other people pay to do. So oh, that's nice. That's a good way to put it, and it also I guess gives you a sense of purpose as well to uh, describe it that way. I see some really beautiful birds behind you. Oh yeah, this is our office, and, and we've got a whole bunch of uh, pictographs of birds. Are they specific birds? Can you take me through what each of them is? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, actually, this is an interesting one. It's called uh, the Paradise Flycatcher. So it's uh, it's endemic. I mean, it's, it's found in India. In fact, you can find it uh, close to Bangalore also. Oh, yeah. It's one of the prettiest birds that I have seen. You see the white tail, which is quite cute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks really cute, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, this is a tree that is a maca. That's a kakapo. And this one is, uh, I forgot what this one is, but uh, that's a kakapo, and this one is a, a, some sort of a crate, I think. Some sort of a crate, I can, I can go with that. Uh, but, you know, it's such a nice atmosphere to work um, in, and I think in some ways, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side. So if you were a software engineer, I'm sure you would, you know, be wanting to do this. And now that you're doing this, I don't think you want to go back to software engineering, I'm sure. <laughs> No, I still write some code. Like if I have to fix my website, I write my own code. Oh, so the okay. thing is that whatever I, I mean, I, I only do things I, that I enjoy. You, you're self-sufficient and that's perfect. Um, you know, I want to uh, talk about this. You, you've worked with so many amazing animals. You've worked with tigers, you've worked with snakes, you've worked with, I'm sure, um, elephants and all kinds of, I'm talking about them like they're your colleagues, but they are your colleagues right now. That's who you work with. Um, can you tell me about one really exciting encounter and one really scary encounter? Um, 
I mean, there, there have been a lot of interesting ones. Um, but the recent one that we've also shot and shown in the film is um, we were filming uh, otters. Otters are what what you call nirnai in Canada, which is basically right. dogs. Yeah. And we were filming, and suddenly we saw that there's a tiger also sitting in the water, the same the same kind of water hole. And like we didn't know what to expect because there's a whole bunch of otters, and then there's a tiger. The right. otters managed to scare the tiger out of water. How and, did that happen? <laughs> a lot of otters. So it's amazing, right? Because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Yeah. And then of course, it's there in the film if you watch it. But yeah. it's one of those things, right? That um, you never know what happens in the jungles, right? Because you think this is what happens, but when you go, a whole bunch of different things happen. And uh, scary, I wouldn't say very few, but for me, the, the scariest things in the jungles are the ticks. And oh, the yeah. Because sure. they never leave you. <laughs> yeah, ticks are horrible. You, you scratch. For months, not weeks, for months. Oh my gosh. And, and um, not so pretty places, so. I hope you are tick free and <laughs> ready yeah. to go back again. Um, you know, I, just for my own personal pleasure, could you also tell me an encounter with a snake? Because snakes are pretty much my favorite things in the world. You could ask anybody who knows me, uh, who, thinks I'm a, who think I'm a bit weird, but that's okay. Uh, just tell me maybe an interesting encounter with a snake. So I've been very lucky said you like snakes which is just kind of very uh, it's rare it's not common um i have witnessed um king cobras being born hatching out of an egg oh wow so, this like just this small and kind of the born venomous hoods out yeah. um, so i've managed to photograph them while i was filming them so definitely that i've seen i've seen a whole bunch of colorful rainforest species of snakes beautiful beautiful snakes in the night, in the daytime, um, yeah, it's it's amazing. But but to see uh, newly born king cobras yeah. is I think special. That sounds very special. I in fact saw a king cobra in wild Karnataka as well. Uh, got very excited. And it's like they're almost they're born into royalty, you know, like like you said with their hoods out and everything. So uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, your work sounds amazing. And I do want to talk about Wild Karnataka because this is a film that has been talked about by the Prime Minister. It was screened in uh, the UN. It's a really special film, not just visually, but also, I mean, narrated by Sir David Attenborough and um, Ricky Cage doing the music. We love him. We talk to him a lot. Um, I mean, why did you feel like something like this needed to be made on such a large scale? See, I think uh, overall, if, if you look at um, the audience today, I see that kids are more aware about African wildlife than Indian wildlife. There's very less, little uh, information or content on Indian wildlife. And even in that, our own backyard, uh, which needs to be celebrated, doesn't get celebrated as much. We always think that wildlife is in all the exotic places in the world. You have to go out to see wildlife. And I completely come from the opposite school of thought that you know, you have to see in your backyard to uh, kind of find um, wildlife. In fact, where I'm sitting, like 50, not even 50 feet away is, is, a, is a small little kind of cream cover that we have in the office where we've seen red whiskered bulbuls come, lay eggs and fly away with chicks at least three times. So we're wow. filming things right here in Jayanagar in my office. That's so I think, yeah, so I think the backyard, the beauty of backyard is not very well celebrated. Yeah. And we said, hey, look, if we are not going to make a film out about our backyard, who else will? And I, I think that got us started. And it was not as ambitious a pro project as it was when it started. But, you know, things just add up and add up and add up. And you see things and you film things. And, you know, it's just passion of people and the team that takes it all the way through. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're you're never going to see things if you're not looking for it. So look for it in your own backyard. And uh, you certainly have an eye for things, uh, Amoga. And I think that's beautifully captured in Wild Karnataka as well. Um, wildlife conservation, environmental consciousness, climate change, these are all terms. We hear these terms all the time. Uh, and the basic idea is, yes, there's a sense of urgency in the way we handle things. We don't act on preserving the planet, preserving the environment. Uh, I guess the misconception is that the planet is going to take a beating, but the planet will eventually survive. It will just get rid of us. So what do you think we need to start doing for survival? And is it going to come at the cost of our planet at the rate we're going? 
So I think you made an interesting point, right? The planet is going to survive. What about us? That's a very interesting point because the planet's been through asteroids and meteors and, and all kinds of things, but you know, we have survived here for a blip, blip of a second. If you, if you really look at the time scale of how long the planet has been. So I think the question is not so much whether the planet will survive. It's a question of what kind of planet will we have for the future generation? We will, will we have a dystopian world where everyone is wearing masks and like gas masks and, you know, um, always in fear of uh, epidemics and pollution. And, you know, like even today, it's like it's sad just today to see kids not going out and playing because of variety of reasons. Yeah. Now, now you look and extrapolate these dots uh, over the next 10, 15 years. And, and you know that it's going to be a world that we would not want to live ourselves in. And I think if we take that uh, as a reminder and a warning of what is happening today, it's, it's important that we safeguard what we have as natural resources for our own selves. Yeah. Absolutely. Simply put for ourselves and, and you know, for the coming generation. And, and I think that's something that people need to take cognizance. See, if today we had poaching as a very rampant activity in India, we would have pandemics every week because we have so much more wildlife, right? The fact that the forest department has done a great job, the people have also been a sort of living in coexistence and all of that is the reason that we don't have epidemics of that scale, right? Yeah. So in a sense, we need to not take this for granted because if we do, then we will become a hub for all of these things. But having said that, there is cause for hope because we, with a population of a billion people, are the only country where tigers and elephants still roam with that kind of population. So there is cause for hope. So we need to take a moment to kind of celebrate what we have and not be very like cynical about, oh, everything is going to the dogs. But at the same time, uh, it also should build responsibility as to what can we do individually and independently. And I think Bangalore is a great sandbox for all this. Anything which is could be waste segregation to not using plastics to rainwater harvesting, it kind of gets done quite well in Bangalore, I would say. The number of trees we have, the green cover we have. So I think we should kind of replicate this ethos of I won't I won't even say like conserving or protecting. It's it's just kind of taking care of things, right? Like how do you take care of your things? Like Bangalore, if you look at it, every house used to have a tree. Like house comes with a tree. Like it may not come with a parking space, but it comes with a tree. But now things are changing. So where is our uh, DNA going? Where is our original DNA going? So we need to just apartments with holes. So there's yeah, yeah. a vast difference. But I, I think, think we just go back to our roots in a, in a sense. Back to the roots. Uh, absolutely. And I think I really love that you said there is cause for hope. But at the end of the day, how do you take care of something? You don't take it for granted. Um, and I think that's a that's a great thing to hammer into everybody's heads today on World Wildlife Day, um, celebrating wildlife with Amoga here. And that is why, Amoga, I'm going to play a little game with you right now. Okay. <laughs> now, you uh, work in nature. You're basically part of nature uh, where work takes you. And so you have encountered a lot of animals, I'm sure, in the wild. Now, I have a timer here for one minute and 30 seconds. All right. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, and yeah. in this one minute and 30 seconds, I am going to try to describe to you as many animals as I can. As I can and you have to try and guess as many animals as you can. Putting me in a spot. <laughs> now, uh, I'm sure your performance depends on my performance. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I do badly, but I will try to make sounds and describe them as best as I can. Are you ready? Sure. As many as we can. All right, here we go on World Wildlife Day. Let's celebrate these animals. Okay, this one is in the sea. There's a movie made about it called Jaws. Uh, shark. Yes. Okay, uh, this one I think has spots, uh, very stealthy. Leopard? Yes. Okay, um, this one is a dog, but like a, a wild dog. A dhol wild dog? No. Or, or a painted dog, hyena? Uh, Mowgli, Mowgli was raised by these. Wolves? Yes. Um, okay, this one flies, but doesn't have, I mean, they say it doesn't have any hair. It flies, it's, it swoops down, very majestic, got a large wingspan. Um, 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 it's a Girl, bird. Kites, vultures. Yeah, 
Yeah. You said eagle. Okay. Um, this one is it stings you in the sea. Sorry, can you repeat that? It stings you in the sea. Stingrays. No, it has tentacles. Jellyfish. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one goes like oh, like that. Dolphins. Uh, no, but it has like really sharp teeth. Sharks and whales. And... No, but it's a reptile. Oh, crocodile. Yes. Uh, okay, this one stays up at night. Nocturnal, lots of them. Owls, yes, night guards. Uh, okay, this one is the largest mammal in the world. Blue whale. Yeah, blue whale. I don't. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a non limbed reptile. Sorry. It's a non limbed reptile. Non snakes. Snake. Yes. Snakes. That's our time. I think we got um, a good 15, I'm going to say. No, that's an exaggeration. I don't know if you were keeping count, but I'm going to say we got like 15. I think we got everything. We got everything. <laughs> but of course we did because uh, you are the man when it comes to wildlife and everything to do with nature. Moga, thank you so much for doing this with me. Thanks, Nirja. I hope uh, more people can uh, go out, see wildlife and appreciate what we have. Yeah, I was just going to ask you to give us a message on World Wildlife Day. What would you hope people do today? Look, I think predominantly your, your audience right now is in Bangalore, right? And I say that um, if you actually went to look for birds within a square radius of 50 kilometers from Bangalore, you could actually spot about 150 to 170 species of birds, different wow. species. So if you went to a Lalbagh or Kappan Park, you can, without being an avid birder, you can see 30, 40 species of birds. Yes. So I think we have enough in the city. It doesn't take too much in terms of time, money, resources to go and see wildlife. Yeah. Um, I think you should just take um, a moment to realize that and go out. That's all I'm Everything gonna Everything is closer to home as long as you just look for it. Well, uh, that's a great message. Thank you so much, Omoga. Happy World Wildlife Day. Continue to do the amazing work you're doing and hopefully we can host you sometime here in the studio. Absolutely, Nija. You too. Have a great day and I wish you can also go out and see some birds and wildlife soon. You can. Absolutely. I would love to and I'm looking forward to it and hopefully some snakes as well. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks, Omoga. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.